The Alaska Aces are ECHL champions. We talk with some team members about their title run. The season's over, but business is still taking place. We'll check out the latest news about who's going where. Plus, we finish the season learning how one player is starting his summer. It's all right now on ECHL Week. Hi, and welcome to the final ECHL Week program for the 2013-14 season. When the hockey historians look back on this past year, most of what they remember will be the success of the Alaska Aces. For just the fifth time in the ECHL's 26-year history, one team has captured both the regular season and postseason title in the same year. The Aces have done it all three times they won the Kelly Cup. There are so many people involved when a team wins a championship, and lots of things have to fall into place for that title to be won. The Aces were no different in that regard this year. Timely scoring, solid special teams play, efficient defensive work, and excellent goaltending contributed to a special season that every member of this team will remember for years to come. We talked with a number of the Aces after their title-clinching victory in Cincinnati. Let's hear what they had to say. I think we played eight games in a row on the road or something like that at the end of the season. And we only, lo we only lost one game in overtime. We had a really, really like good, good streak there. And at one point, we realized that we can go for a championship. We had the team. We had, we're, like, we're really a whole team, we're old team, a lot of leadership, old guy. They know how to play the game. And every, when, everyone, when everyone chip in, good thing happens. Ever since I, I arrived on the job back in September 1 and a chance to meet, you know, so many grounded, down-to-earth, skilled veterans like Nick Mazzolini, Gerald Coleman, they had a goal from day one to win a Kelly Cup championship. They came up short in the last two seasons, and they knew it was great to make the playoffs, but it was not what they were after. It was a Kelly Cup championship. They know how important a championship is to this city. They understand just how big it is in their career and how much it does as far as civic pride for everybody else in Anchorage. So it is a special feeling and a special night that these guys will never, ever forget. I can't be happier for them. Really, from the start of the year, you know, we were uh, we had a great group of guys, and uh, we had a lot of guys come in, too. But every night, even if we were down, we'd find a way to come back and win. So it was it was awesome. We, yeah, we knew we had a special team. We had so much talent. Um, guys from Calgary helped us out, and it's been, it's been unreal. It hasn't really set in yet, but it's a lot of fun. It's hard to describe how good this feels. Uh, this is now the third time I've done it with this team here, and um, it, it only gets better, to be honest with you. But, um, you know, I think the first time I won it with these guys as a player, it was, I was pretty tearful and the same kind of emotion. And then now, since then, it's uh, it's almost a better feeling, but it's a uh, big part of it is is to be able to sit back and watch other guys go through it. And um, you never lose appreciation for how hard it is to win this thing. You know, Cincinnati was a, a real tough challenge. You know, and the same can be said for the other teams that we went up against. You know, and uh, it's just so difficult. You know, we've had some really good teams and not gotten there and not been able to enjoy this. Even the young guys got it real quick. Like this, this was this is a, not a rookie team at all. We might have a few rookies on there, but at this point in the season, there's no such thing as a rookie, and they all performed like it. They all behaved like it off the ice. Total professionals on this team. I couldn't be prouder of them. I was championship in Slovak uh, league before 10 years. I got uh, Kelly Cup after 10 years. I am champion. That's a long time oh, since yeah. your last yeah. one. It must feel pretty good, huh? Yeah, it's a long time, but I am happy. I am happy. I can. I could uh, play in, uh, in Alaska. It was really good team, really good coach, really good staff. And if you if, if you look around, we don't have one guy who doesn't get along with another guy. We don't have. We don't have, we don't have any. We, we don't have any clicks on this team, and, and you know. 
good, good team chemistry off the ice is, is what wins games on the ice. I think uh, the, the whole group here, is, I think just kind of feeling all season right from the start. Uh, we got a lot of guys join, a lot of guys leave, but everyone played a huge role. And uh, I think it was just basically came down to having such a close team. And uh, like we have fun here. Every day we have fun. And I think that's what really builds a good team. Everybody says something about a close team. You you feel the same way? That this is really a good, close knit bunch of guys. Yeah, I joined halfway through after the Bulls folded, and you know from the first week on, everyone made me feel at home, and you just felt right away that you know this is a great team. You have a chance to win it. It doesn't come along often. I played a, played a hockey a lot of years, and you just know you have a feeling, and you know it finally happened. So it's all that matters. Obviously, for the Alaska Aces, the Kelly Cup Finals were memorable. But for practically everyone associated with the ECHL, the final series of the season meant lots of entertainment, excitement, and all-around great theater. As we go to break, let's check out a few of the scenes from the final few days of the 2014 Kelly Cup playoffs. emotional locker room speech that you won't see or hear anywhere else. It's coming up on ECHL Week. Stars shine in Orlando in January of 2015 when the Solar Bears take on the ECHL All-Stars at the Amway Center, presented by Visit Orlando. Visit OrlandoSolarBearsHockey.com for more information. Where have hundreds of NHL players gotten their professional starts? The ECHL. And where do you find out about the ECHL? ECHL Week. On television or online. ECHL Week is the only show that brings you everything that's happening league-wide. Every week, watch ECHL Week. If you were any closer to the action, you'd be in the lineup. We've seen how the Alaska Aces went about winning the third Kelly Cup title in their history. But as special as it was for every member of the team, for one man, head coach Rob Murray, it was especially meaningful. Murray, a third round draft pick of the Washington Capitals in 1985, spent 16 years as a pro player with 10 teams in the old International League as well as the American League and the NHL in which he played over 100 games. After retiring as a player, he coached eight seasons with the AHL's Providence Bruins before taking the head coaching job with Alaska at the start of the 2011-12 season. In all that time, he had never won a championship. So when the Aces clinched the Kelly Cup, it really hit home for Murray. Here inside the team's locker room after the game, we have exclusive footage of Murray giving his thoughts to team members celebrating the title. But I will keep it short and um, I love you guys. I do. I mean, the way that we played all year, we stuck together. Um, how well we played. You know, we, we just, you know, I remember that night in Bakersfield and I asked you guys, and it was never 
and you said, you know, we don't want to get too high, we don't get too low. And I respected that so much, it pissed me off, but it respected it so much. Because <laughs> I was, you know, I didn't think we, we enjoyed the win enough some nights, you know? But now I know it was the end game. It was what we were looking for. And this is what it was all about. This is what it's all about. Yeah! Yes, sir! And I love you guys. I, I was just saying that, Ronnie, I played 16 years. I think it's my 11th year coaching. I've never won anything. I've never won a championship, um, you know, at, at the pro level. And I, and I love you guys, and I thank you for it. From the bottom of my heart. Murray was understandably emotional after the Aces won the title. I asked him what his strongest memory will be when he looks back on his first pro championship season. I think it's just, um, you know, I came in uh, the year after they won the last Kelly Cup and, and uh, inherited a team, basically. And, um, and uh, you know, I, I had, you know, carry over from that team. And we were a very good team. We won the Bramham Cup that year. We came up short in the conference final. But this year, I think it's more special because this team's uh, outside of Gerald Coleman and uh, Kane LaFranchise, who spent the majority of the, the year in the NHL, uh, American League, um, I recruited this whole team. And this is a team that I built. And, uh, you know, I think um, I'm pretty proud of that. As we wrap up the 2013-14 season, let's take one more trip to see what's going on around the league. The Toledo Walleye have named Dan Watson as the team's associate head coach. New head coach Derek Lalonde said, I am very excited to have Dan be a part of the team again this season. Watson had been the team's assistant coach since it started in 2009. He finished last season as the interim head coach after Nick Fatusi stepped down in February. The deadline has passed for teams to complete trades, which were initiated during the past season. The rights to 13 players changed teams. Notable on the list is forward William Rapuzzi, the ECHL's Rookie of the Year, whose rights moved from Idaho to Toledo. Rapuzzi was one of five players whose rights were acquired by the Walleye. Also on the move was 2013 All-Star C.J. Severin, whose rights went from Orlando to Alaska. Remember that none of these players are under contract for next season. The teams who acquired these players have exclusive negotiating rights with them until various times over the summer, depending upon a number of factors. The Eastern Conference champion Cincinnati Cyclones have renewed their minor league affiliation agreement with the NHL's Nashville Predators for next season. Nashville has served as one of Cincinnati's parent clubs since the 2007-8 campaign. During that time, five Cyclones have made their NHL debuts with the Predators. At the American Hockey League level, the Cyclones will again be affiliated with Milwaukee, which serves as Nashville's top minor league club. The Orlando Solar Bears have agreed to terms with forwards Mickey Lang, Mike Ulrich, Ian Slater, Alex Gallant, and defenseman Ben Schutron for the 2014-15 season. The most notable of those players is Lang, who led the ECHL with 44 goals last season while being named the league's most valuable player. For the 14th straight year, ECHL alumni were members of the Stanley Cup champion team. This season, Los Angeles Kings assistant coach Davis Payne, along with players Kyle Clifford, Trevor Lewis, Martin Jones, Dwight King, Jordan Nolan, and Jonathan Quick, manager of communications and broadcasting Jeremy Zager, and scouts Mark Mullen and Mark Yannetti, all had experience working in the ECHL. Payne, who coached Alaska to the Kelly Cup in 2006, is only the second coach, along with Mike Havland, to win both a Kelly Cup and Stanley Cup title. King, Nolan, and Quick were each part of the Kings' first Stanley Cup championship team in 2012. Joe Ernst stops by to answer one more viewer question, straight ahead on ECHL Week. There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Are you paying too much with your current payroll company? Are you concerned about how Obamacare could affect your business? If you're interested in a better, more cost-effective solution, Einstein HR is the answer. No more stressing out about Obamacare and the new regulations. No more worrying about being in compliance. 
No more overpriced payroll services. Let Einstein HR get you back to the business of doing business instead of spending needless hours and frustration taking care of details that add nothing to your bottom line. We provide a first-class payroll and HR services with superior customer service. Call Einstein HR today. Hi ECHL hockey fans, this is Pat Kelly and you're watching ECHL Week. Today's question for the Q&A is from a viewer. It's from Nick, a Toledo Walleye season ticket holder. Nick's question is this. The NHL, AHL, NCAA, KHL, and almost every other major league around the globe is using a two-referee system, or a three-official system with two referees and a linesman, or is at least considering making that switch. The upside is self-apparent. The only downside I've seen discussed is cost. You've said that the ECHL wants to get the best officials available. In my opinion, having two referees would go a long way to improve the officiating. What do you have to say about that, Joe? Well, he's right that um, their, their leagues are, are the leagues that use two referee system. Um, the American Hockey League depends on the National Hockey League. is the only reason they have two referee system. So um, if the NHL wanted to come and pay money for us and, and help us fund a second referee, I'd be more than happy to use this, the second referee system. Um, but I think that the one referee system in the regular season is really good for development. Um, and, and we've proved it through the number of guys that we've had go up and get hired by the National Hockey League and work in the minor leagues and, and, and the minor leagues under American League deal. Um, as far as that, we use the second referee in the conference finals and in the finals uh, just because of the speed of the game. Um, but I, I, I'm not sure that it would be cost efficient to put two referees on the ice in every game in the ECHL. I'm not really sure that we would get the proper bang for a dollar um, as far as that goes. But um, you know what, we would be on our own to do that where, you know, the NHL obviously can afford that. Uh, that's, a, that's a no brainer. And the KHL, they spend all kinds of money and stuff like that. And the NCAA has a lot of money. But um, uh, people see it in the American Hockey League and it's not funded strictly by the American Hockey League. So that's kind of a misconception that everybody sees the two referees in the American Hockey League. Um, and like I said, if the NHL wanted to give us some money to develop guys, I'd be more than happy to, to put a second referee on the ice. Speaking and following up on that, we should note that the American Hockey League, at least this year, does not use the two referee system in every game. It's only in selected games. It was about 50% of their games. Uh, rumor has it that maybe going in the next year, they're looking at maybe going to 100% of the games. But I think that's going to be in uh, negotiations or something like that with the NHL, I'm sure, um, as far as that. But it's it's a pretty big cost. I know it's a big cost um, as far as the, we have in the in the second or the third and fourth round. Um, it's it doesn't come cheap. Everybody just says I'll put a guy on the ice. There's a lot that goes into it with travel, you know, uh, the paying the guys per game, the off days, the hotels, and, and everything else. So it's a good uh, it's a good bit of money that goes into uh, into the cost there of having a second guy on the ice. That's today's Q&A with Joe Ernst, Vice President of Hockey Operations for the ECHL. Although we've talked about the Kelly Cup champion Alaska Aces, the team the Aces beat, the Cincinnati Cyclones, deserves some recognition too. The Eastern Conference champs were tied 2-2 in the final series and had two leads in Game 5, but were unable to put the Aces away. It was the Cyclones' third trip to the finals and the first time they'd ever lost. First-year head coach Ben Simon was philosophical after his team's season came to an end, two wins short of a championship. We're proud of our guys in that locker room there. We had a great year, and Alaska had a great year as well. They have a very good hockey team, and at the end of the day, they they uh, went home with the, with the prize. But they uh, a well-deserved team, well-coached team, a very skilled team, and very disciplined team. They uh, from start. To finish, they were probably the best team in this league, and you know, we're proud of our guys for being able to give them a run for their money. There are a lot of positives to take out of this year, and a lot of those kids in there, and we were a young group. If you look at our playoff roster, the number of rookies we had and the number of second-year guys we had, I mean, we didn't have a lot of experience back there, and for those guys to gain that experience, I think, for their development uh, process, it's huge for them, and it was huge for me. I mean, it was my first year. It was a huge development process for everyone. It was a learning curve for everyone, and 
I think at the end of the day we'll look back, you know, we'll take a couple of days and you know, a few days when we wake up, you'll, we'll look back and just have, uh, it, was a, it was a good run. The, the player movement is significant in this league and there's a certain uh, element of developing, but at the same time there's a certain element of winning. And I think this year uh, not, we won. We had a great year. Uh, didn't win the ultimate prize at this level, but uh, at the end of the day, I think we developed the, the hell of a lot of guys. Cyclones goaltender Rob Medour was named Most Valuable Player of the 2014 Kelly Cup Playoffs, becoming the first player from the losing team to win the award in the ECHL's 26-year history. Medour appeared in all 24 postseason games for the Cyclones and ended with a 14-10 record, a 229 goals against average, and a save percentage of 930. He led all goaltenders in the postseason in games played, wins, minutes, and saves. He talked about the quality of the Cyclones after this series was over. You know, we had a special group of guys, a great group of guys. We all seemed to like each other pretty much. So, um, you know, we, we knew we could do some big things, and it's just a matter of, uh, you know, coming, uh, coming up at the right time, and I thought we did. And like I said, you know, we just ran to a good team. For the history of this league to, to be in the losing team and get that, uh, the, the MVP, the most valuable, valuable player of the, of the series, is it, it speaks for itself. Robbie was tremendous from the time he put on the Cyclones jersey he, he works his tail off and that's what uh, that's what a lot of people don't understand like, he he competes and he does not want to be shown up by anyone else any other goalie in this league and he works his tail off and he uh, was rewarded for that uh, uh, with with the recognition of that trophy but I, I guarantee he'd give that back in a heartbeat for a different trophy I think uh, Hazen, Hazen scoring in uh, game six here to send us to the finals, that was incredible. It was a, an, an amazing individual effort and he made a great shot. And, yeah, it was nice to be able to celebrate with all the fans here and, and all the guys in the locker room. And uh, you know, it's something I'll remember, definitely. We wrap up the season with a look at some good news. That's next on ECHL Week. CHL teams donated more than $3.9 million to charitable and nonprofit groups this season. The league and its clubs have contributed more than $31 million in the last nine years. The gifts are in addition to thousands of appearances by team personnel at public and charity functions. This year's figure includes over $291,000 for cancer awareness and prevention. That increases the total raised through Pink and similar events over the last eight seasons to nearly $2.6 million. The season is over and players around the league have gone their separate ways. Now that the summer's here, many are involved in interesting pursuits. For example, Scott Tansky, a forward who spent the last two seasons with the Orlando Solar Bears, has gotten a haircut. Anytime you might have seen Tansky in the last two years, you know it. It's doubtful that any player in the league had hair that was as long and red as his. Now that hair has been donated to Locks of Love, a nonprofit group which provides hair pieces to financially disadvantaged children in the United States and Canada who are suffering from long-term medical hair loss. The donated hair is used to make wigs and provide help to restore self-esteem and confidence for these kids. I have been growing my hair out for three years with the idea that if I was able to grow it out to 10 or 12 inches, I wanted to donate it, said Tansky. 
At times, it was challenging not to cut it, as the long hair was not always the most pleasant. But now, it's going to be a little bit tough to part with it, but it is for a great cause. That cause helps kids, such as Sophie, seen here, who recently helped with a Locks of Love fundraiser cut-a-thon in Findlay, Ohio. She spoke to other kids at a school assembly about how Locks of Love benefits kids with alopecia as well as cancer. This was a fitting way to close out the season for me, Tansky said. And now it's time to start training for next season. That wraps up another season of our program covering North America's premier AA hockey league. We thank you for joining us over the course of the season and hope you enjoyed our show. We hope to see you again next season as 21 teams and hundreds of players and coaches take part in the ECHL's 27th season and compete through regular and postseason play for another try at the Kelly Cup. Until next time, make it a good week and enjoy your summer.